Rise from your grave. Hey game fans, it's RC and welcome to another episode of Game Grave. Today, we're going to jump right into playing Pango, which was released on Atari 2600 in 1984. This was originally an arcade game, I guess, in 1982, which, uh, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I've never played it before. So uh, let's, let's get right into it and see what we do here. So in the game here, you play as Pango the Penguin, and uh, your goal is to uh, pretty much kick these blocks and... Like so, crush the the snow bees as they're called in this game. So that yeah, there there isn't really much to it. Right there, that should finish this first level. First level's pretty pretty simple. So yeah, as as Pango, you you want to basically walk around, kill the snow bees, and uh, be whoa! Don't walk into them. If you walk into them, it's done. You're done. So look at that. Oh, two for one. That's what we call a two for. Some of the blocks, however, apparently have snow bee eggs in them. And if you release any of these eggs, then you get more snow bees. Uh, snow bees. It's hard to say. Snow bees. Anyway, you get you get more snow bees than you really wanted. And the snow bees can also melt the ice if you walk next to them. Uh, like what just happened right there, and I ran into the snow bee. Now, one thing that I thought was interesting was most of the time when you play... Uh, games of this nature from back then, um, you know, levels reset when you come back to them, you know, not, not so much like Pac-Man or anything like that, you know, because you got to finish your pellets, but I noticed that the board doesn't really reset for you. It doesn't start you over, it gives you the same amount of enemies you had when you when you lost. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Of course, you can melt the ice yourself, too, like I just did. And there we go, that should be level two. So, yeah, as you can see, there really isn't much to Pango, and, uh, it's definitely a decent game. I, I don't know if it's a game I, I would definitely call a classic. I don't even know if it's a game I, I would return to at any point. Um, but it's definitely interesting. I think that the, uh, ah! Don't come in here. I think that the, the sprites for the time look pretty damn good. Like, it, I when you look at the penguin from the side here, I mean, he looks like a penguin. Pango looks like a penguin in the game. Which, I mean, that goes... I mean, that says a lot, considering the time. Back then, you know, you you just have a dot on the screen, and you're like, you know, if you're playing adventure or something, you're, you're like, oh, you are an adventurer. You are also a dot. And at the time, you know, you had to use your imagination quite a bit, but... Pango looks like a friggin' penguin. The snow, bee, uh, snow bees, on the other hand, I mean, what does a snow bee look like? I mean, it's not like we have a, a comparison, right? We, we can't be like, that doesn't look like a snow bee. Which I guess is why a lot of Atari games in the past had... Oh, that was perfect timing, look at that. Why a lot of Atari games in the past had uh, questionable characters, characters that were kind of nondescript at the time. Take that, snow bee. Take that! You know, you would look at a shape in an old Atari game, and you're like, what is that? And they're like, oh, that's a Pac-Man. And you're like, okay. And those are ghosts, right? And you're like, yeah, those are ghosts. And you're like, but what the hell is Pac-Man? Hmm. Who knows? Bam! Look at that. Now that is a combo right there. That is how you do a combo. Oh, I just missed him. Now, I'm not qu Ah! Ran right into him. I was not quite sure what the snow bee was doing right there. It looked like he was frozen for a second there. Maybe... I don't know. Depending on how much ice is around them, maybe they get, uh, get smushed on their own accord? I have no idea. All smushed, yo! Gotcha smushed. Oh, he walked right into him. He walked right in and he kicked me in my penguin penis. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh, missed all of them. One of the things I've noticed about playing, uh, while playing this game, and I, I haven't played it much. It's, I mean, I played it twice considering 
I played it to kind of learn about it a bit, and I'm playing it now. <laughs> that's, that's my extent of playing Pango. But the AI is completely unpredictable. You don't know what way they're going to turn. I mean, it's not like they go all the way over to the ice and you're like, oh, okay, they're going to turn right because they hit the ice at this certain area here. Got them. So sometimes they'll go up and they'll just like all of a sudden change direction and go, eh, I'm going down now. Which kind of kills strategy in a way. I know I'm making a lot of comparisons to, uh, to Pac-Man, uh, or at least talking about Pac-Man quite a bit while I play this. But I feel like that's for good reason. I mean... It has shades of Pac-Man in it. Like, yeah, we, ugh. It's one of the other things with Pango is that when you're walking up, or any any direction, really, um, it's, it's incredibly hard to get him to turn back another way. Once he's going up, he's got to finish that movement before he can go down again. You know, vice versa, left, right, all that. So right there, like, I move down. I gotta wait till he finishes his move down procedure. Ah. So as you can see, yeah, I, I totally just biffed it in the last game and died, so we're, we're on to a new game here. But yeah, I, I would say that's probably like my biggest myth, as I was talking about earlier, is that just the AI. I mean, it makes it really hard to strategize what you're going to do in the level, how, how you're going to get these snow bees. Some people might argue, hey, that's what makes it random and fun. Uh, Pac-Man pulls from that that whole uh, idea by having the ghost kind of randomly go a certain direction. I mean, you know that the ghosts are coming after you and they're, they're kind of planning to corner you in certain ways, so you know that's going to happen. I mean, your main strategy in Pac-Man is, you know, don't get cornered. Make sure you always have a way out. But in Pango, I mean, you don't really have that option. I mean, if you can't break the blocks quick enough or melt the blocks quick enough, there, there's no way you're going to survive. I mean... In Pac-Man, it's, it's like so quick... Oh, I'm dead. Cornered myself, see? Didn't leave myself a way out. But then again, there would have been no way out. But in Pac-Man, everything happens so quick. You know, there's no, no pushing of, of uh, blocks. You don't have to push any buttons. I mean, you're just running around. That's it. And when you go one way and, you know, you're going to the right, you hit left. He, on a, you know, turns on a dime. You're like, eh, er, going the other way. Pango, not so much. So the thing hurting Pango, obviously, uh, uh, from what I've been talking about, is, is the control. Oh, I missed both of them. It's it's the control in the just random AI. I, I'm not a big fan of that. I like to be able to strategize for certain certain things, like to to know, and, and maybe that'll come with like future playthroughs of the game. I mean, maybe I'll be like, oh, the snow bee. Now I know that he's gonna go this way because based on my experience, you know. He'll go that way, but I don't know. I don't think that's the case. Other Atari fanatics, you could probably prove me wrong, but I don't think that's the case. But again, Pango looks great. I mean, the penguin looks like a penguin, and the ice ice blocks look like ice blocks. Again, with the snow bees, who knows? See, what, what is that? I don't know what that is. I stepped on him. <laughs> so he must have been flattened somehow. Ooh. Oh no, I was gonna push it! Didn't happen. I also like Pango Pango's like little knockdown animation when he's down his uh you know, little lines above his head and everything. It's very, very cute. God, in what world? Snow bees, you know? Like, what if what if bees could exist in the winter time through the snow, build hives in the winter, and c come after you? Ugh. Imagine those gigantic Japanese hornets or, or bees, whatever they are, and they're the ones that are building gigantic winterized hives and coming after you. No, thank you. I want no part of that. Yeah, I got one of you. But another one hatches. Whew. See, sometimes when you're waiting for the snow bee to cross, you, you're kind of just sweating bullets, like waiting, because you're not sure if it's going to turn up into you or if he's actually going to go by. Unpredictable. Oh, not going to get anybody with that one. Ah! 
And Pan look at Pango's little walk animation, too. That looks great. Ugh. Too busy looking at the walk animation. I love that. He's like, ah! Love it. And the other thing I, I failed to mention through almost two games of this is that the blocks with the little uh, flashing yellow square in the middle, these are the blocks that will never go away. So, I mean, if you get to the point where they have melted all of your ice and that's all you have left, at least you have something you can use. However, if you kick all these blocks into a corner, I mean, there's not really any way to get them out, is there? I, I've, n I've never tested this knowledge. But, like, in, in this point here, like... Two of them are in the corner. Oh, oh, narrowly got away. Where are you going, dude? Where are you going? You coming down? Oh, jeez. You guys are jerks. Come on now. Okay, so anyway, yeah, we melt that block ourselves. And there's absolutely no way to kill these things now. Now we are just absolutely trapped. So if we die, if we die, we'll see if it resets. I hope it does reset because we do not have a prayer. Yeah, see, now we've kind of knocked ourselves into a corner. We have no way of getting through this level, which sucks. But hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, something happened. I guess they found out that all the blocks were unmovable and it just moved us on to another level. Interesting. Oh! Sorry, Pango. And I believe that is the end of Pango. Everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Game Grave.